it became a part of my everyday life. Stronger than a drug. It was a guy thing. It was just something that men did. A porn addict gets busted by his wife. I just asked him, I just said, are you having an affair? And he said, yes. Immediately, my heart sunk into my stomach. See how this couple finally finds freedom on today's 700 Club Interactive. Well, good morning and welcome to the show. Kanye West, John Mayer, Tiger Woods, Charlie Sheen, what do all these celebrities have in common? Well, they've all come out publicly about their struggles with porn. And former NFL player and actor Terry Crews recently discussed his crippling addiction in a series of videos posted to his Facebook page. Several other athletes, musicians, and actors have taken heat for admitting to being hooked on porn. And Mitch Alverson, you know, he didn't want to admit anything, let alone wait to succumb to the seven-year itch. He was checking out internet porn shortly after marrying his wife, Michelle. And years of betrayal followed until Mitch was left with these final options. Pack his bags and tell the whole truth. Michelle caught her husband, Mitch, red-handed. She was going through bills when she saw charges for internet pornography. She told herself it wasn't a big deal the first time. It was a guy thing. It was just something that men did. And I just said, you know, don't do it anymore. I was gonna ask him um, on a monthly basis if he had looked at anything to kind of hold him accountable. It would be something that I would confess uh, more than once. Mitch was just a curious seven-year-old when he first opened a pornographic magazine, left behind by his big brother. One glance started a habit that stayed. It became a part of my everyday life. Mitch couldn't just stop. He was addicted to pornography. And as the confessions kept coming, Michelle's feelings changed. And then I think I just thought, I don't want to know. You start to think, am I not good enough? It's just betrayal. It's heartbreaking. Michelle was already a Christian when they married. Soon after, Mitch became a believer too. But the couple was more concerned with how they looked to others and didn't really surrender their lives to God. I don't know if I knew who I was, really. Um, probably um, scared and lonely and looking for security in a marriage and not in, in the Lord at all. I did religion. You go to church, you take your kids to Sunday school, and then everything just works out perfect. I believed in God, but I don't think that He had any rule or reign over my life. It was all a mask. The couple was already growing apart when Mitch was asked to work overseas a few months. I was taking care of the kids, I was taking care of the house, taking care of all the responsibilities here, and actually enjoying it being just us girls. But Michelle had no idea Mitch was having an affair. The flesh and the devil had just pulled me away, you know? And I allowed those things to uh, come between uh, me and the Lord and, and me and my wife. Mitch's secrets caught up with him when he returned home and noticed symptoms of a sexually transmitted disease. You need to hit some sort of bottom before you, you understand uh, the real ramifications of, of what's going on in your life. Turns out Mitch didn't have an STD, but the situation was enough to scare him straight. He told Michelle they had to talk. One way I describe it is if God reached down and kind of grabbed me by the back of the neck and said, I've had enough. I could hear him crying. I just asked him, I just said, are you having an affair? And he said, yes. Immediately, my heart sunk into my stomach. I think I had expected her to, um, to ask me to leave, and I had intentionally left some things in the car just in case. The confession from her husband was devastating, but Michelle says the Holy Spirit took over and even she was shocked by what she did next. I just began to embrace him and to love on him and to tell him that I would be there for him. And it's a picture of what Jesus did for me. I make my own selfish choices. And he does not turn his face from me. He embraces me and loves me. And that is what I did for Mitch. And in the midst of that, I was comforted as well. Mitch says his wife's response showed him what God's love really looks like. 
He's the one who put me back together. You know, he's the one who reached down and, and grabbed me and pulled me out. He's made me whole again through Jesus. Mitch and Michelle made friends at a local church. That's where they joined the Celebrate Recovery Ministry, a Bible-based program that helps people overcome hurt, habits, and addiction. It takes some accountability and it takes uh, an open uh, place where you feel like you can actually share what's going on in your heart. The couple decided to put God first and let Him show them how to love each other. We love because He first loved us. So I don't love Mitch just because he's my husband. I love Mitch because Jesus loves me. He paid such a high cost for me. Uh, I need to love Jesus more than I love that sin. And you can do that. You can love him more than you love that sin. You can have that complete change of heart. How do you get that? It's not based on you trying to drum that up to say, well, I'm going to love God more. No, that's not how it works. What works is you open to him and you say, Lord, I surrender. I can't do this, but with your help, I can, I can overcome anything. I can do all things with your help. It's not based on willpower. It's not based on, well, I'm going to make yet another resolution. It's not based on all of any of that. It's all based on him for he is the answer to every human need. Now, the amazing thing is, God loves you right now in the middle of anything that you're doing wrong. He loves you. He died for you. The Bible even says that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. That means you. Why did he do that? because he wants you to be with him for all eternity. He loves you infinitely, and he loves you so much, he doesn't want to leave you where you are. He wants to transform you from your innermost being so that you can be like him, where you can come to the point where you can love unconditionally, where you get to have the ability of the Son of God in you. Because that is what God intended from the beginning, that we would be his children, he would be our God, we would dwell with him in a garden. That was his goal, that's his dream. Now, we're the ones that messed that up. We're the ones that went away we're the ones that decided to do our own thing. We're the ones who said, I'll give in to temptation. But the great news, and it's the greatest news the world has ever heard, God hasn't given up on his dream. He still wants you in that garden. He still wants to talk with you. He still wants to be your all in all. That's what he wants. So if this is for you, if this is what you want, all you have to do is pray, a prayer of surrender, to say no longer your way, but let God have his way in you. Pray with me. Don't turn away. If you want to be free from this, truly free, pray with me right now. Jesus, that's right, just say his name, say it out loud. Jesus, I come to you, and Lord, I surrender all. I don't want any of my sin. I, I don't want any of that anymore. I turn from it now, and I turn to you. And Lord, I know I can't make it through without you. It's not by might. It's not by my willpower, but it's by your spirit. So Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive me. Cleanse me. Breathe on me afresh and make a new spirit within me. Do this for me. Change my heart. Change my desires. Do it now. 
for I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, for those who just prayed, I pray for a cleansing. Let your righteousness reign in their hearts. Let them love your righteousness and cling to it, Lord God. Do it now, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. If you're having a struggle with lust, with pornography, we've got a free bro brochure for you. It's called Overcoming Lust. All you have to do to get it is give us a call. 888-777-1999. And if you're having problems with any sin of the flesh, uh, there's, there's a way out. And if, if, it's, if it seems difficult for you, uh, just do this. S decide, I'm going to go on a fast. I'm going to dedicate the next three days, four days, five days, well, whatever you think is appropriate. It could be just, you know, I'm going to do this this afternoon. And say, I'm going to dedicate this time to seeking God and His way and His righteousness. If you'll do that, any chain of addiction can fall right off of you. Well, there's also another way you can win the war against sexual addiction. We'll tell you about some apps that can help, and we're going to be praying for you. But first, parents who were told their baby was cursed. When people saw her, they used to say, who knows what sin your forefathers might have committed to make your daughter be born like this. We'll tell you how CBN is helping them and families around the world. All that when we come back. Each year, hundreds of thousands of people are diagnosed with medical conditions ranging from physical deformities to eye and ear impairments to appendicitis. The good news is that many of these conditions can now be treated through surgery. The bad news, many will never experience healing because their families are too poor to afford the necessary medical care. And when Sahita was born with a cleft lip, neighbors told her parents that their daughter was cursed. Her mother and father not only worried about their baby's future, they also feared she might die. Sahitha was born with a cleft lip. Her parents knew it would devastate her entire life. I was sad and scared. When I tried to breastfeed her, she choked and cried. And when I fed her with a bottle, the milk often came out of her nose. I was worried about her future. Would she be able to go to school? Would she ever get married? No one was willing to help them in their small village in southern India. Many thought it was a generational curse. When people saw her, they used to say, who knows what sin your forefathers might have committed to make your daughter be born like this. Sahitha's father couldn't pay for a cleft lip operation. He's a barber, but he didn't make enough money to even run a shop. He spent most of his time going door to door looking for customers. Then CBN found out about Sahitha when she was two and a half months old. We immediately gave her a free cleft lip surgery. Three weeks after the operation, we visited the family. We are so happy that she can easily drink milk and she looks so beautiful. We no longer are worried about her speech, education or even marriage. CBN also wanted to help Sahitha's father provide a better life for his wife and daughters. So we gave him a barber shop. All new equipment and supplies were included. Now he'll get a lot more business since his customers will come to him. I will make sure that my daughters get good food, clothes and education. And I will take them to doctors when they get sick. We are indebted to you. You gave my daughter the surgery she desperately needed and you gave me a shop for my livelihood. Thank you so much. Well, CBN is providing hundreds of life-changing surgeries throughout India, Asia, Africa, and Latin America just since 1999. We've done over 10,000 cleft palate surgeries. And this summer, CBN's Orphan's Promise is planning on completing 19 cleft lip surgeries in Vietnam. In partnership with surgeons, hospitals, 
and caring people like you were able to provide these surgeries to families in need. Thousands are in need of this surgery, and you can be a part of it. If you're already a member of the 700 Club, thank you. You're part of it. If you're not a member, call us right now, 888-777-1999. Just say, I want to join. How much is that? Well, it's just $20 a month. That breaks out to 65 cents a day. When you call and join, I want you to have this. We'll send it to you as our gift to you. Heaven, what God has prepared for those who love him. It's a wonderful DVD teaching from my father. In here are the stories of people who have died, have gone to heaven. They've come back to tell us what they experienced. And then there's a whole section, an interview with a cardiac surgeon and what he's experienced in the emergency room of people as, as people have died and then come back to life and the stories they tell. You'll want to have it. Call us. It's yours when you call us and join. So do it now. 888-777-1999. And if you want to designate your gift into these wonderful special surgeries for children, for people all around the world, all you have to do is go to 700clubinteractive.com. There's a place on the giving page where you can designate your gift into special surgeries. Or you can just say on the phone, uh, I'd like to designate this into special, special surgeries. 888-777-1999. Still to come, it's a battle many face. Anybody can be free if they're willing to do the work, but the first work is getting honest. And a lot of Christians, we're not confessing our faults one to another. We're not talking about what's going on. Hear how sex addicts come clean and learn about some apps that, you can, that can help you stay clean. All that is right after this. Well, sex addiction is one of the most powerful addictions imaginable, and it affects everyone, including Christians. But what if you could beat it? Well, Paul, Paul Strand talked to a leading authority who says there is hope for sex addicts and that freedom is possible. Sex addiction can hook its victims in a much worse way than other vices, such as drugs or alcohol. CBN News went to one of the world's most renowned experts to find out why. Sexual addiction is probably one of the hardest addictions to walk out of because it's part of who you are. Drugs is not part of who you are. Alcohol is not part of who you are. It's something you do. Sexuality is part of who you are. When it comes to a sex addiction, you'd think at least the addicts find great pleasure from it. But in many cases, they feel horrible about it and trapped and imprisoned by it. We caught up with Dr. Doug Weiss, head of the American Association for Sex Addiction Therapy at a marriage enrichment retreat in Rockaway, New Jersey. He explained why this is so hard to break. The scripture says when we sin sexually, we sin against our own body, okay? What happens is you get these endorphins and encaphalins, hits the excitement center of your brain, and boom, you literally glue to whatever you're looking at. Well, if that's an object, now you've created an appetite for an object, and that can create lust, sin, and death in your life. Okay, that's James 1.15. That's the scripture that says in full, then when lust is conceived, it brings forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, brings forth death. As Weiss points out, this is serious and hard to beat. The actual sexual chemical is stronger than anything you can take. Many addicts stay addicted because they believe there's no way they could ever break out of it. Weiss knows that's not exactly true because he escaped the cycle. I was conceived in adultery. So that, you know, you don't start off well there. And then I was uh, put in foster homes. I was uh, sexually abused. I was alcohol, drug addict, sex addict. And he has a message for others. They could get better. They could have a fantastic life. They could be free from uh, pornography and sexual addiction. I've been free for 29 years. I've set thousands of people free, you know, seeing them get well. But as he told this group in a men-only session, you can't do it alone. Anybody can be free if they're willing to do the work. But the first work is getting honest. And a lot of Christians, we're not confessing our faults to one another. We're not talking about what's going on. Weiss writes in his book, Clean, I was in Bible school and yet still fully sexually addicted. I tried, cried, fasted, prayed, and memorized scripture, but still I would fail again and again. He'd confess over and over to the Lord, but couldn't find healing till he fully accepted James 5.16. Confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. There's hope once we open the door of telling somebody, this is what's going on with me. And tens of thousands of guys have taken my word for that, and they have told somebody, and they start to get free. But why says you'll still face struggles, so take the next steps. Stay in prayer and in the Bible. Be accountable. Get into support groups. We have support groups all over the country called Freedom Groups, and there's other kinds of support groups all across the country. Weiss tells groups the rewards of freedom are awesome and points out what the resurrected Jesus told the church afflicted with sexual sin in Revelation. If you just 
die to that thing, kill that, and just live for me. And don't try to be duplistic sexually. Be monogamous sexually. Then I'll give you authority over the nations. He says his own life shows it. That's what we do. We help healing others from sexual addiction all across the globe. He says freedom will also make your marriage better and very likely bring you prosperity. Most of the guys I work with double their income in 12 months of being free. How could the two possibly be linked in recovering addicts' lives? Their self-esteem goes up, their creativity goes up, their spiritual and moral and emotional maturity, their marriage level uh, satisfaction is higher. So they're just much more productive beings. And without the guilt and shame, without the thing that says, if you really knew me, you wouldn't love me, eating at you every day, you are free to create, you are free to prosper, you are free to connect. And the favor of God comes on your life. Weiss says to get there will take swallowing your pride and opening up. It's gonna hurt, but one bad day of being honest is better than decades of struggling. But many addicts stay addicted for decades because they are so afraid of that one moment of telling the truth. So anybody can get free if they'll get honest and they get accountable. I started accountability with my roommate in seminary. And then you start getting free. And free is so much better than trapped. Through the sunsets, free is free indeed. And free is so much better than being trapped. Well, years ago, getting a hold of pornography was a little more difficult. Since the digital revolution, porn has become a global business and a global crisis. But there's some digital tools that'll help you fight back. In the U.S., porn generates $13 billion each year, $3 billion from the Internet alone. Internationally, that figure reaches a staggering $97 billion. That's more revenue than the NFL, NBA, and MLB combined. It's estimated one in five smartphone searches are for porn, and each second, 28,000 people are watching it online. Just based on the couples that I've seen through the years, at least 50% of the couples that are coming forward have some type of struggle with either pornography or internet affairs or some type of sexual issue. It's clearly a problem. People have lost careers, family, and their lives to this industry. But we want to turn the focus towards solutions. Here are a few ways to break the addiction and gain freedom. The first step is rewiring your brain and that means filtering your online access. Covenant Eye software not only filters content, it monitors each website and search term used. It then sends a detailed automated report to an accountability partner. So as users venture into the gray areas, it allows for an ongoing conversation on how to adjust behavior. Another great resource is an app we found called Victory. It's designed to help users identify triggers on a daily basis eliminating weak spots in behavior. In order to visually see your progress, Victory includes a calendar to track successes and setbacks. There's also an option to notify accountability partners with one click if you're feeling weak. No person is an island, and fighting addictions is no different. GodOverPorn.org centers around community. It offers free online support groups, workshops, and resources to help you stay plugged in through the fight. Experts agree. A change of perspective helps when it comes to dealing with addictions. As Matt Frad, the creator of Victory App, puts it, I think what's really important is that we stop looking at victory from pornography as a destination and start viewing it more as a daily choice. Victories happen one day at a time by the decisions that we make. The important thing to remember is that victory will be won. I'm Caleb Kinchlow, and this is Digital Download. Well, those are some uh, digital tools that can help you overcome any kind of addiction that you have. But the most important tool that we have is our access to Jesus, our access to God the Father. And when we realize He's a loving Heavenly Father, He wants to set us free. He wants us to be in a garden with Him. When we get that, we get an identity from that, and we get strength to overcome anything. We've gotten some prayer requests in. Here's one from Andy. Please pray for my struggle with pornography. I'm not ashamed 
to admit I need help. And Andy, that's a good first step. Here's Bethany. Pray for my marriage. My husband is unsaved, and it makes it very difficult to be on two different pages all the time. I want us to come together on major issue, issues, and it just isn't happening. I'm not sure how much more I can take. And then Cody, I've been struggling with lust and know that it's the cause of my divorce. I can't think straight because my head always feels cloudy. I feel empty, sad, and lack motivation. I just want to be free from this. I don't know if it's spiritual or mental, but it won't go away, and I'm desperate. Please pray for me. Well, let's lift these up to the Lord and realize He answers prayer. Let's pray. Jesus, we just bring these needs to you. And for anyone in the audience right now struggling, struggling with the consequences, struggling with the motivation, struggling with the desire, we just speak your freedom into their heart and into their spirit. Set them free from this, Lord God. And for Cody, we just pray right now that you would give him a new mind, clarity of thinking right now. For Bethany and her marriage, restore in Jesus' name. And for Andy, set him free. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. We leave you this word from John 8. A slave does not abide in the house forever, but a son abides forever. Therefore, if the son makes you free, you shall be free indeed.